The 2020 presidential election is a step closer to a conclusion after a winner was declared over the weekend. Coming up, we'll have more details on this year's historic political showdown. The Texas Tech community is known by many for their giving spirit as many groups host charitable events throughout the year. But this year, COVID-19 has halted many of opportunities to raise much needed funding. MCTV's Austin Seat has a look at one class of students who are braving the complications of COVID-19 to help out a good cause. And Texas Tech Athletics had another up and down weekend of wins and losses, both on the road and at home. MCTV's Ryan Heller has a rundown of the highlights and scores along with a preview of the openers for Texas Tech basketball. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of MCTV's Weekday Update. I'm Natalie Gomez. And I'm Kritzia Williams. The United States of America has had a new president today after challenger Joe Biden finally received enough electoral votes to be declared the winner of the 2020 election. On Saturday morning, the Associated Press officially declared that the state of Pennsylvania had been won by Biden. That victory gave Biden 20 electoral votes, which was enough to push him past the 270 mark necessary needed to win the race. Pennsylvania, along with Georgia, North Carolina, and Nevada, had all prolonged results after each state continued to count in mail in votes past Tuesday's general election. After Biden's win in Pennsylvania, Nevada was also declared as a win for the Democrat over the weekend. Georgia and North Carolina are the only two states still counting ballots, with both races too close to call. But even with the two wins this weekend, Donald Trump is continuing with legal action to challenge the results in several states with extremely close results. States such as Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Arizona all have Biden winning by less than 1% of the overall vote. However, even with those close races, Biden also leads in the popular vote by more than 4 million ballots. Although the general consensus is that Biden is president-elect, it is possible that the legal challenges could continue throughout the rest of the year. In other news, a company working to create a vaccine for COVID-19 just released some very encouraging results, which could be a game changer in the fight against the disease. Earlier today, pharmaceutical company Pfizer announced that early results from its coronavirus vaccine may be as much as 90% effective at preventing COVID-19. The results came from a round of human trials that started earlier this year. Even though the results appear optimistic, Pfizer said that the effectiveness could change before the end of the study and a wide availability of the vaccine may not happen until next year. Here on the Tech Campus, COVID-19 continues to be a concern after the campus saw a jump in positive cases last week. From Saturday, October 31st the la to last Friday, November 6th, university officials reported 172 new cases of the coronavirus. That made for an increase of 82 more cases than the previous week's report. However, the previous week also was skewed by two days of winter weather, which led to less testing. Even though COVID-19 infections have varied since the semester began, the university has not reported more than 170 new cases in a week since the last full week of September. As of Friday afternoon, Texas Tech has reported a total of 2,373 positive tests in the campus community since the beginning of August. With the number of COVID-19 cases increasing on campus and around Lubbock, so are the concerns of many groups who had planned to host public events during this time of year. And even though many events continue to go virtual, one department here on campus took time to engage with a special group of students in person. Earlier today, the Office of First Generation Transition and Mentoring Programs held the First Gen Week Kickoff event in the Sub North Plaza. Students could stop by between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. to pick up a free t-shirt and swag and learn about all of this week's events. First Gen Week is an annual celebration of students who are the first person in their family to attend college and a chance to let them know that they are not alone. 
So we really want to make sure that we are um, celebrating and empowering all of the different identities that our students hold. And being first generation is just one of them. But we want to bring that community feeling together, but we also want to support the personal, academic, and uh, social success of our students as well. Texas Tech is so proud to celebrate over 8,500 first gen and college students. We really are committed to and have an obligation to support them, bring them together, especially during these unique pandemic times where physical interactions are so few and far between. Today's first Gen Week kickoff is the only in-person event scheduled for this week's celebration. All of the other events, including several yoga sessions and student organization fair, have been moved to online to keep students safe. For a full list of events taking place this week, as well as much more information on first-generation students, visit diversity.ttu.edu slash FGTMP. Many students here at Texas Tech often give back to the community through charitable events hosted by groups and organizations. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has reduced those efforts and their benefits to local nonprofits. But MCTV's Austin Seat shows us there's a group of students at the College of Media and Communication that has not let the coronavirus keep them from helping out a good cause. Last Thursday, students from the Advertising Campaigns class partnered with 4Golf to raise money for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of the Southwest. Both parties came up with a special one-day-only package for the event. For $20, you can get an hour of golf, and then you can select from a limited menu, uh, and 15% of the proceeds will go to benefit Ronald McDonald House Charities of the Southwest. Students from that class manned a table near the entrance, encouraging people to take advantage of the package and give back to a good cause. Customers would then head outside to the range and practice their golf swing. Connor Jackson, a student in the Advertising Campaigns class, says RMHC is a great resource that helps out the Lubbock region. So Ronald McDonald House Charities in the Southwest is a charity that provides a home away from home for uh, families that have children that are sick or ill. and hospitalized, uh, it offers a place to live and eat and sleep, it makes the family feel closer and it provides just a comforting feeling for the family and the child and it just is a really big help. Traditionally, Ronald McDonald House has had people from the community come in to prepare food for the people staying at the facility. However, due to COVID-19, RMHC has had to adapt their delivery methods to ensure people's safety. So something cool they're doing right now is they are preparing food in-house at the Ronald McDonald Charity House and they are freezing food, uh, making casseroles and whatnot for families that are struggling right now and for families that have children in the hospital. If you would like to learn more about the Ronald McDonald House Charities of the Southwest or make a donation, you can visit their website at rmhcsouthwest.com. So come on down, have a free, play a free round of golf, have some food and soda to go along with it. Isn't that right, guys? Well, there you go, folks. I'm Austin with MCTV. Back to you in the studio. It was almost a perfect weekend in the South Plains with temperatures in the 70s and 80s on Saturday and Sunday. But as is often the case in West Texas, the wind tried to spoil an otherwise picture-perfect fall weekend. And it looks like it's already doing the same today. So with Will that be the norm as we continue into November? MCTV's Madison Harton joins us in the studio with the latest look at the forecast. Madison? Thanks, Natalie. Well, one of my professors here at Texas Tech in one of my ATMO classes once said that the air never sits still in West Texas, and I think that has been the theme over the past couple days. Despite all the nice weather we've been having, we've been having a lot of gusty wind out there, and today is no exception. For today, our high temperature climbed all the way up to 79 degrees, so almost back to the 80s with sunny and warm conditions, but the thing spoiled it is that wind. Southwesterly wind coming at 20 to 30 miles per hour with 40 mile wind with 40 mile per hour wind gusts possible this morning, which was a bit crazy to say the least. But looking into this evening, we are going to be seeing a slight decrease in wind, albeit slight, with a westerly wind coming at 15 to 25 miles per hour with a low temperature of 43 degrees. Looking at the South Plains as a whole, we can see that most of the South Plains is going to be experiencing some breezy and some gusty conditions. But the interesting thing going on is actually out there by Aspermont, they're going to have a 20% chance of precipitation for this evening. Personally, I don't think we're going to be seeing any rain here on the South Plains, but fingers crossed, we 
we are still in a drought and we could use a little bit extra rain here on the South Plains, albeit even if it is just a small amount. Looking into tomorrow, however, we are going to be seeing high temperatures climb back up into the 60s and around the 70s. So it's going to be slightly cooler than it was today, albeit not by much, but still very beautiful outside. And then looking into Tuesday night, we're actually going to be seeing temperatures drop back into the 30s. No chance of winter precipitation like we got two weeks ago. That was definitely an anomaly, especially for October. But we are going to be seeing freezing temperatures out there by Friona. So it is going to be cool, but again, no chance of winter precipitation despite it being below freezing. Bringing it back into Lubbock locally for tomorrow, we're going to be seeing this wind continue with a westerly wind coming at 10 to 20 miles per hour, but that is a lot more manageable than 40 mile per hour wind gusts. With a high of 65 and a low of 36, it looks like Tuesday is shaping up to be another beautiful day here on the South Plains. For Wednesday, we have a high of 71 degrees, low of 38, and another southwesterly wind coming at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then for Thursday, we're finally going to be seeing this wind dissipate with a southwesterly wind coming at 5 to 10 miles per hour, a high of 73, a low of 47, and of course, for the next three days, we're going to have sunny conditions here on the South Plains. For MCTV Weather, I'm Madison Harton. Back to you, Kritzia. Thanks, Madison. The Thanksgiving break is just over two weeks away, and that means many students are making plans to return home for the holidays and possibly for the rest of the semester. But if you don't have your own form of transportation and you're looking for a safe option to get from here to home, one campus group may have an option worth checking out. Tech's Office of Parent and Family Relations have once again partnered with BreakShuttle.com to offer a series of travel options for the Thanksgiving break. There are several bus trips on the schedule that have stops in Austin, Dallas, El Paso, and Houston, with return trip options for those coming back to campus. Tickets for the trips range from $159 for a one-way trip to Austin and Dallas to $169 for El Paso and $179 for Houston. Return trips to Lubbock campus are the same cost from each destination. This year, Break Shuttle is also taking several safety precautions in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, including a 50% limit on bus passengers, the requirement of a mask for passengers and drivers, and a liability waiver that prevents any rider from boarding the bus if they are experiencing coronavirus symptoms. This year's Break Shuttle trips take take off from the R11 band lot behind the sub on Wednesday, November 25th, and return trips will come back to Lubbock on Sunday, November 29th. For more information or to buy tickets for this year's trip, visit BreakShuttle.com. The Texas Tech football team is still looking for another win after an unsuccessful trip to the Metroplex. But Red Raider soccer is feeling particularly good after taking down one of their biggest rivals in conference. MCTV's Ryan Heller has those stories in a preview of Tech basketball in sports. Ryan. Thank you, Natalie. Yes, Texas Tech football uh, fell short against the TCU Horn Frogs on Saturday, 34-18. It was pretty even going into the second half as the Red Raiders only trailed 10-3. During that time, they struggled to get any sort of rhythm on offense at all. They eventually got it going a little bit by scoring some explosive touchdowns, a 60-yarder to Jalen Polk and a 57-yarder to Eric Azucama. But Tech came up short in the fourth quarter as they went for a field goal on a second and four and missed. They eventually got the ball back but then threw an interception to seal it for TCU. Next week, the Red Raiders will host the Baylor Bears on Saturday at the Jones AT&T Stadium. Kickoff is at 3 p.m., and if you can't make it to the game, you can watch it on FS1. Texas Tech Volleyball was swept this weekend by the Kansas State Wildcats. They lost the first match three sets to two on Friday, then were swept on Saturday three sets to none. In Friday's game, Samantha Sanders recorded 18 kills and four blocks. Emerson Salano had 22 digs, and Reese Rhodes had 42 assists. In Saturday's game, Samantha Sanders had 10 kills and Reese Rhodes recorded 8 digs along with 26 assists. In next week's two-game matchup, Tech will host the Oklahoma Sooners here at the USA on Thursday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 4 p.m. If you are unable to make it to the games, they will be televised on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Now, for some positive news. Texas Tech soccer came out victorious against the Texas Longhorns on Friday, winning one to nothing. After coming out of halftime tied at zero, Kirsten Davis launched a shot about 25 yards from the net on the outside corner in the 53rd minute of play. 
That ended up being the game's only goal and gave the Red Raiders their second win on the year. Madison White also had another impressive outing with six saves in the game. On Friday, Tech will be playing their final regular season game of the year as they will head to Manhattan, Kansas to take on the Kansas State Wildcats. The game will begin at 7 p.m. and it will be televised on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time. In a few short weeks, we will have college basketball once again. For those of you who are worried that we might have a shortened or possibly no season at all, you can relax because it will start on November 25th. Both men's and women's basketball teams are anxious to start a new season after last year's postseasons were canceled due to COVID-19. Men's basketball will start on November 25th against Northwestern State, and the women's team will also start on November 25th against UTRGV. Well, that is all for sports. Back to you, Kritzia. Thanks, Ryan. So, Natalie, did you have a chance to see any of the Red Raider teams in action over the weekend? I did, because I work for the soccer team. I was able to see that game up close and personal. Nice. Sounds like fun. But that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.